Brightstorm has thousands of high-quality videos covering all major subjects. Please check out more at www.brightstorm.com. We're finding the zeros of polynomial functions. Now let me show you two examples. f of x equals negative 2 times x plus 3, x minus 1, x plus 10. If you're given a polynomial like this, it's really easy to find the zeros of the function because the, each of these factors contributes a zero. So you'll have negative 3, 1, and negative 10. So you're generally not going to get a problem this easy. What about g of x, which is not factored? This is the kind of problem you'll see. Find the zeros of g of x. Well, there are generally three steps we have to think about. First, use the rational roots theorem to find potential zeros. These are potential zeros. They don't necessarily work, but we have to check them. And we use synthetic division to test the potential zeros. And finally, we'll factor out whatever factor corresponds to the zero, and we'll get a reduced polynomial that'll contain the rest of the zeros. Let's see how this works with the example of g of x. So I want to find, I want to find all the zeros of this polynomial function. Now the rational roots theorem says to look at the integer factors of the leading coefficient and the constant. Now the leading coefficient is 1. Its integer factors are negative 1 and 1. For example, 1 times 1 is 1, and negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. So those are integer factors of 1. And for 10, we look at plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 5, and plus or minus 10. We could take two of these numbers, multiply them, and get 10, like negative 1 and negative 10 would work. Now the rational roots theorem says that the potential zeros are these integer factors divided by these. So plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 5, plus or minus 10, all over plus or minus 1. And of course, that's just going to give you the stuff on the numerator, right? This doesn't really contribute anything. So what I usually like to do, and I suggest you do too, is start with the easy ones. Start with 1 and negative 1. So let's start with 1. Now we're going to use synthetic division to test these. So the way synthetic division works is I'm using 1 as my 0. I write the coefficients of this polynomial down here. 1, negative 1, 8, and 10. The 1 comes down. I multiply, write the result here. So 1 times 1 is 1. Then I add, and I get 0. Then I multiply again. 1 times 0, and I write the result here. Then I add again, 8, and I multiply. 1 times 8 is 8. And I get 18. This last number is my remainder. Now the remainder is not 0, so 1 is not a 0. That means that g of 1 is actually 18, if you remember the remainder theorem. This is actually the value of the function g at 1. So 1 didn't work. Let's try negative 1. Same coefficients, 1, negative 1, 8, 10. And same process. Bring the 1 down, multiply, add, and multiply, add, and multiply, and that works, right? The remainder is 0, and that means that negative 1 is a 0. And that means that x minus 1 is a factor. And by the way, this, these are the coefficients of the other factor. So this function can be written g of x equals, and one factor is x minus negative 1, x plus 1. The other factor is x squared minus 2x plus 10. This is the reduced polynomial. Now, if you want to find the remaining zeros of this function, you've got to look here, right? This one has a zero of negative 1. This has the other two zeros. Now, it's a quadratic, so we can use the quadratic formula. a is 1, b is negative 2, and c is 10. So negative b, which is positive 2, plus or minus, b squared, negative 2 squared is 4, minus 4ac, 4 times 1 times 10 is 40, all over 2a, 2. So this is going to give me 2 plus or minus root negative 36. It's imaginary, right? Root negative 36 is 6i. So 2 plus or minus 6i over 2, which is 1 plus or minus 3i. And that represents two zeros, two imaginary zeros for our, pol our polynomial. And so the zeros are 
negative 1, 1 plus 3i, and 1 minus 3i. Now, remember what we did. First, we used the rational roots theorem to find potential zeros. We had all these potential zeros. We were lucky to find one of them so quickly. But I would always check 1 and negative 1 first. The arithmetic is going to be the easiest. Then once you find a zero, you can take the, the reduced polynomial and look for the zeros of that. Now, the reduced polynomial, if you start with a fourth degree, the reduced polynomial will be a cubic, and you have to do more of this synthetic division. But when you finally do get a quadratic, use the quadratic formula and find the remaining zeros that way. And by two. I can't do this with you two laughing back there. So if we had, no, that's not right, three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> that should be... Less than. Yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be bleh, starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, two fix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>